Hello and welcome. My name is Professor Gaming, and I am your professor for Pokemon 101. Today is going to be my third lecture, and today's topic is going to be on Pokemon types. Um, that is right. So lecture number three, um, homework was due on Monday. It is currently Wednesday, so I hope you all have that turned in. I will be grading them very shortly um, as I am recording this as of right now. So be sure to uh, look at grades uh, online once they are posted. So yeah, today we are going to be looking at types of Pokemon. Now I know what you must be saying, types, that's a little bit ridiculous, but yes, Pokemon have types. They're not just categorized by mouse or horse or dragon. Um, they actually have elemental-ish like types. Um, and so with that, we are going to be um, exploring what those types are and how they work within the Pokemon world. So what is today's goal? Today is to understand the uh, Pokemon types, specifically the type chart. This is the one that I would recommend um, as it is accurate and it is the most easily to understand and organize. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, we have a word on the left and on the right, um, one being resistances and the other being effectiveness. These are going to be very um prominent and keywords um, in today's lecture. So resistances, um, as y'all can see, there are several boxes within the grid-like chart that are red, and you have some that are green. You also have some that are black, which I'll get to in a little bit, um, but the ones in red are going to be resistances, and the ones in green are going to be um, effectiveness. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and just go straight down the list. So we're going to be, if you look at the top of the chart, it's going to say defending type. And over here on the left, down the sliver, it's going to say attacking type. Um, so yeah, basically we're going to be going across or down this list. They're in the same order. Um, and we're going to be understanding why some Pokemon resists or are effective or even immune, that's what that black square means, um, to other typings in relation. So first things that you need to know, Pokemon have either one or two typings, um, but no more than three and no less than one, or no more than two and no less than one. And any Pokemon can pretty much have any type. Well, sorry, I misspoke that. Not every Pokemon can have every type. Every Pokemon has types that they are assigned. Um, now moves on the other hand, they also have types. So you have fighting type moves, flying type moves, ice type moves, and different stuff like that. And every Pokemon is assigned a type. And so this is going to help with damage. This is basically what um, damage is going to be doing. So if a move is resisted by a Pokemon, so we have a rock type, say Gigalith, for example, uh, Gigalith is a uh, mono rock, which means that it on it is only rock typing and not rock and ground per se. Um, so if Gigalith is hit by a normal move such as Mega Punch, uh, Mega Punch's overall power is going to be decreased by half since rock does resist normal type. But let's say if Gigalith is hit by a fighting type, which is a green, fighting types are actually going to deal double the damage. So instead of half, they're going to deal double the damage um, because Gigalith is a rock type and fighting types are super effective against rock. And we're just going to use that for an example. But for right now, we're going to look at every Pokemon typing and why they either resist, immune, or are super effective against another type. So to start off, we have the normal type. As you guys can see, I have blocked out most of the grid just so y'all will stay focused with me. Um, so yeah, we're going to go over its defenses first since I feel like that is important. And then we will make our way towards um, what normal type as an attacking type would be. So normal as a defensive type is actually pretty good. Um, it has it is weak to one thing and it has one immunity and it is takes neutral damage from everything else. So as a defensive type, it's not that good, but it doesn't have many weaknesses, but it's also not very strong against anything. Um, fighting types are 
super effective against normal because if your average Joe is going up against somebody like John Cena, John Cedar, the the fighting type in this case, is going to definitely win against out against your average Joe. Um, ghost types are immune to go or sorry, normal types are immune to ghosts. Normal people can't be affected by ghosts because ghosts are of another world and they phase through you. Um, and then everything else is just normal type because it's the normal type. You, it, it's just normal. So now normal as an attacking type, it is normal to most things. It does have to rock because if you've ever tried punching a rock, it, it hurts you. And so rocks are really hard. And so normally a regular punch isn't going to do much against it. Um, normal or ghost is immune to normal for the same reason that normal is immune to ghost. They two realms cannot connect. So a ghost can't hit you and you can't hit a ghost. It just makes sense. Sorry. Uh, let me go back. There we go. Fighting um, is steel also resists fighting or normal. Steel also resists normal um, because if you've ever tried to punch a piece of metal or a piece of steel um, for the same reasons as rock, it's not going to do much. Honestly, a case could be made for ice type, but sadly, ice types do not resist normal. Um, and yeah, it basically goes everything else. This is going to be one of the more simpler typings. So let's go ahead and move on to the fighting type. So the fighting type, now that we have a little crosshair going on, uh, fighting is super effective against normal. The only thing that is super effective against normal. And yeah, for the same, uh, John Cena is going to punch out the average Joe. Um, other than that, fighting is weak to flying because a bird can easily hit John Cena. It, it doesn't need to. Uh, flying can also be perceived as either bird-like, so you have like wings, or it can be perceived as air. Um, depending on the move, it can um, be interchangeable. So yeah, uh, a bird is going to be able to swoop down and then fly away against the fighting type. Um, fighting resists rock and bug because a fighter can punch through a rock. And it resists bug because bugs and fighting, like, um, you you know, uh, fighters don't want to deal with bugs. I don't know. It, bug and fighting are the only two moves, or the only two different types that resist each other. Um, so yeah. Uh, psychic is good against fighting because mind over matter, basically. Uh, you know, brain over brawn. Um, so a psychic type is going to be able to outthink a fighting type, since usually... The stereotype is that fighting types are more dull. Um, dark type, because dark is perceived as the evil type, um, and it's translated to literally evil in J uh, the evil type in Japan uh, in Japanese. Um, dark uh, being evil, fighting type will win against um, dark types because good over evil. And fairy does uh, is super effective against fighting because fey creatures are more magical, and they're gonna do. You're, they're just going to be better against uh, with their magical attacks than fighting type and its physical attacks. So yeah, fighting resi uh, is resisted by flying and poison um, because a fighter can't you can't really punch poison and you can't hit a bird if it swoops down. Um, it's super effective against rock and steel because a fighter could be uh, can break through rocks and they can also bend steel um, if they're strong enough. Um, bug and fighting they resist each other. Fighting cannot hit ghost types. Ghosts. Um, it's kind of the same as normal. You can't punch a ghost because they're transparent um, and they phase through you. Um, fighting also does have to psychic because of the mind over matter concept again. Fighting can also break through ice. Um, kind of the same reason for rock and steel. Um, fighting is super effective against dark because good versus evil. And it, ta uh, and it deals half damage to fairies because fairies are magical. They're just magical. All right. Moving on, we have the flying type. Flying are super effective against fighting, as previously stated. And, um, yeah, they're, they're good against bug because flying Pokemon, bird Pokemon can swoop down and pick up bugs. Uh, it's also super effective against grass for the same reasons. And they do have to rock, steel, and electric. They do have to rock because if you throw a rock at a bird, or birds can't peck away at rocks. You can look at it that way. Steel type because birds can't break through steel. And then electric because birds don't like electricity and they could be paralyzed by it. I don't know. I'm kind of making these up as I go to give you a general um, reasoning as to why, an, e an easy reasoning as to why types are effective or not. Uh, so f uh, flying types, they resist fighting type attacks. Again, 
already previously stated, flying types are immune to ground types because if something is flying in the air, then what's on the ground isn't going to matter. You can have an earthquake, but as long as you're not on the ground, it won't have much of an effect on you at all. Um, rock type uh, do super effective again damage against flying because two birds with one stone, I guess that's the saying that can be easily remembered. Um, they take half from bugs since bugs are usually found on the ground. Um, they take half from grass for the same reasons. Electric because uh, if, an elect if lightning is being struck, it wants to ground and a flying type... Lightning can come from the ground and it can come from the sky. And so if they meet, they hit the flying object in the sky. I don't know. It's just easier to hit. Um, ice, because if a bird's wings are frozen, they fall to the ground. And that's about it for the flying type. So the poison type. Um, the poison type, it resists fighting for reasons previously stated. Uh, they resist poison because poison on poison is not very effective. Just one of those things. Um... Poison takes double the damage from ground since ground doesn't really, isn't really affected by poison and it can, I don't know if an earthquake is happening, it could shake the poison loose, I don't know. Um, bug takes half from poison since bugs can usually have some sort of poison or venom with inside themselves. Grass, um, it takes half damage from grass because poison types are going to be super effective on grass. Um, uh, psychic does double the damage to poison since smarter people can figure out a cure for poisons and venoms. And then fairy types um, deal half damage to poison because fey creatures don't like toxic things. Um, as an offensive type, um, poison resists poison. There, no shocker there. Um, poison is not very good against ground because ground is super effective against poison kind of thing. It does half to rock, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I guess it's kind of the whole same thing with ground. Um, ghosts take half from poison, which I actually didn't know. I don't, I'm not too good on resistances, but on super effective, I'm pretty good at. Um, I have no idea why. Uh, steel is immune to poison because steel and iron can't, they're not living things, so they can't be poisoned. Um, grass can be poisoned because of stuff like weed killers and stuff like that. And then, uh, poison is also super effective against fairy because fairy creatures don't like toxic things. Next up, we have the ground type. Um, as an offensive typing, the ground does nothing to flying, um, for reasons previously stated. Ground does double the damage to poison, again, previously stated. Um, and then it does double the damage to rocks, since rocks usually are on the ground. I don't know. That's just how I remember it. Um, they do have to bug, because bugs are usually... They can either fly, or they can do whatever. They're used to being on the ground. Um, ground also does double the damage to steel because steel is usually within the ground and steel has to be implemented into something in order for it to be really strong and sturdy. Ground also does double the damage to fire since sand and rocks um, and other things like that, um, fire can't consume them because they're not necessarily organic uh, in nature. Um, ground does have to grass because grass grows on the ground and it's deeply rooted in it. Um, and then ground is the only thing that electric is weak to. Um, ground, uh, it does double the damage to electric because electric Pokemon can be grounded by ground types. It just kind of makes sense. Um, as a defensive type, uh, poison, it is, it resists poison. It also resists rock because it's super effective against them. Um, it is weak to water because water can get into the ground and break it and crack it. Grass, it already grows, it grows on the ground and is already rooted in it. Um, it takes no damage from electric types because of grounding, and it's weak to ice because ice can make the ground slippery and it covers it, uh, and that's basically, and it can split the ground. That's basically all that I know. So yeah, next up we have the rock type, which is similar to ground, but definitely different. Um, as an offensive typing, uh, it does half to fighting because fighting is super effective against rock. Uh, it does double the damage to flying because you can throw a stone at a bird. Um, it does half to ground since rocks are already on the ground. Uh, it does double the damage to bug because you can squish a bug with a rock. Uh, it does half the damage to steel since steel can usually break through rock. Um, it deals double the damage to fire because you can stop a fire by putting rocks around it. I don't know, I just think of a fire pit. And then it deals double the damage to ice since rocks are typically harder than ice. Uh, as a defensive typing, it resists normal because it's so hard. Um, it takes double damage from fighting for previous reasons. Um, 
flying and poison because neither of them are super effective on it. Uh, it just kind of makes sense. Uh, double damage from gone for previously stated. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to stick to this little reverse L shape here. All of these um, will be for reasons previously stated. Um, so yeah, it resists or it takes double the damage from steel because steel can usually grind and break up rock. Half the damage from fire because it's super because rock is super effective against fire. Water because water can break through rock and get inside of it and do stuff like that. Grass for the same reasons. And yeah, that's about it. So the bug type, um, it resists a lot of things, and that's about it. Well, actually, it, sorry, it, it's resisted by a lot of things. I misspoke there. Um, but I don't know why ghosts resist bug. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, steel is resisted by bug because bugs can't eat through steel. Um, fire burns bugs, so it's not super effective. Uh, bugs can eat grass, so that makes sense. Um, bugs also do double the damage to psychic types because psychic is only weak to things of the mind and so bug types can be scary and that's why they're super effective against psychic. They're also good against evil types because evil people still don't like bugs and then fairy types are accustomed to being around bugs and so they are not very effective against them. Uh, defensively, um, they're weak to fire because fire burns them and then they're uh, they take half from grass because bugs typically live in grass and they can eat it. All right, so the ghost type, it can do nothing to normal and it can do nothing, uh, and no, uh, normal can do nothing to it, but also it is immune to fighting. Now, if you remember earlier, ghost can hit fighting, but fighting can't hit ghost. Um, and this is a weird phenomenon. Basically, ghosts are able to hit fighting types and I have no idea why. Um, yeah. Other than that, there is this bug which is kind of fun and yeah ghosts take double the damage from ghosts because they're able ghosts are able to hit each other i guess i don't know um ghosts also do double the damage against psychic type pokemon because psychic types are weak to ghosts like they're scared of it and then dark types are already evil enough they're not afraid of ghosts and then d uh darks types are also super effective against ghosts for the same reasons the steel type is the most offensive type in the game. Um, it resists a lot of things, as you can see here. Oops. And it has a few uh, things that it is super effective against. So steel resists all of these um, for reasons previously stated. Fighting types can break through it. Flying types are just weird. Uh, poison does nothing to it. Uh, ground shakes it up. And yeah, as an offensive type, uh, steel can break through rock, already previously stated. It's resisted against steel because iron... Make, uh, I don't know. Iron sharpens iron. I don't know. Um, it's weak to fire types because fire can weaken steel. Uh, it's also doesn't do very well against water because what are you going to do? You can't really beat water. It's a liquid. It's a solid versus a liquid. Um, electric, it doesn't do very well against because it can conduct. Electricity can conduct through steel. And then it goes well through ice since you're able to break through ice with a pickaxe of some kind. And it does super effective against fairy because fairy creatures are usually weak to steel and metal um, things because they are not necessarily organic in nature. Fire does two times the damage to steel because it can weaken it. Uh, it resists grass and a bunch of other things because it's strong. And that's about it. That's all you need to know, really. Um, the fire typing is really, really good. It is super effective against bug. It takes half, it does, it deals uh, half damage to rock. It also deals double the damage to steel for reasons previously stated. Uh, fire on fire, it just adds more fire, so it resists it. Water resists fire because, well, it's water. Water is going to put out fire. It does double the damage to grass because grass is able to burn. Ice is able to melt, and dragon resists the elemental four. Basically, that's what I like to think. They resist the four um, elements um, that kind of make up the world. So yeah, um, water is super effective against fire because it can put it out. Um, grass does little because fire burns grass. And fire resists fairy since it fairies aren't accustomed to fire, I guess. I don't know. They're not used to it. Next up, the water typing. Super effective against ground and rock uh, and fire for previously stated reasons. Um, water on water just adds more water, so it resists it. Water does have to grass because grass can absorb water. 
and dragon because water is one of the elemental four. Now water is, uh, it takes super effective damage from grass um, for the same reasons. Uh, it also takes damage from electricity due to most water having um, minerals in it and so electricity is able to conduct through water very, very easily. Um, and then water also does half to ice since ice is just frozen water. And so yeah. Next up we have grass. Um, grass on grass is just more grass so it resists itself. Um, electric, it takes half damage from electric since grass is usually so close to the ground and there's it can't really pass through it very well. Um, it does take times two damage from ice because if you think of like ice freezing trees freezing you know the morning dew or whatever frost um it just covers ice and then a uh, uh, dragon resists grass because it's one of the elemental four all right the electric type um it does nothing to ground it does multiple damage to flying because of previously stated reasons electric on electric it resists itself already heard before it does have uh, it deals half to dragon because it's an elemental four. These four are the elemental four, fire, water, grass, and electric because the first three are the starters and then the fourth is electric. And so dragons are known to cover many elements. And so that's why dragon resists it. Next up we have psychic. Psychic on psychic, like two minds at, you know, I just think of like a chess tournament, like they just freak each other out. So they just take half damage from each other. Um, and then psychic does double, or it takes double the damage from dark types. Um, since they're usually evil and scary and then in return psychic can't do anything to dark because of this So next up we have ice ice on ice is just more ice So it resists itself and then ice is also super effective against dragon because dragons are usually reptilian like and they are Cold-blooded and so if ice types are just going to make them cold and slow down um, and then ice is super effective against flying because you can freeze a bird's wings. I feel like I already said that before. So yeah. Next up, dragon. It resists the core four. It also does half damage to steel since steel is usually um, a very good resistor of dragon type um, attacks. And dragon does uh, double the damage to dragon because the only thing that can kill a dragon is another dragon. Um, dragon does half damage, or actually does no damage to fairy, I misspoke there, because fey creatures are immune to the arcane and draconic type of the dragon, and then in return fairy types deal double the damage to it. So yeah, last, uh, second to last typing here, the dark typing or the evil type. Um, they take double damage from fighting because of good versus evil. They take double the damage from bug because even bad guys don't like bugs. Uh, half the damage from ghost because, well, they're not afraid of ghosts. Um, they are immune to psychic types because psychic, like, outthinking an evil person isn't going to help if you don't have that experience. And then in return, dark is super effective against ghosts uh, and psychic for those reasons. Dark on dark, uh, an evil mastermind is already going to know what another evil mastermind would do, so therefore... They just resist each other. Uh, and then fairy types are usually pure, so the dark type does less damage to them. And then in return, fairy types, um, they're pure, so they overwhelm the bad guy with their happiness and goodness and all that stuff. Last typing, fairy types. Whew, I'm a little bit out of breath. Basically, fairies are good against fighting dark and dragon because they overpower them with their more magical powers and because fairies mean to dragon. Um, it takes... Uh, it deals half the damage to poison since poison types are super effective against fairies um, because they're not used to it. They're used to living in the forest with grass and bugs, but poison is toxic for the environment and that, and fairies are usually uh, natural beings that grow up in the environment. Um, with that being said, fairy types are also weak to steel because that is a man-made object and metallic objects usually are super effective against fairies. Um, they take no damage from dragons as previously stated and they deal double the damage to dark and dragons because they're fairies. And yeah, um, there was this dark because evil stuff isn't going to have an effect on fairies that much. So with that being said, that is every Pokemon type covered. I am so glad that I was able to get through this relatively quickly. 
Um, I ultimately got this idea from MNJTV Pokevids, but I figured I would go ahead and cover it in this class in case some of you hadn't seen that. Um, and yeah, so next week's test is going to be over Pokemon typings. Um, this concludes Unit 3. Um, we're moving through this course very, very quickly. Um, and yeah, so I hope you guys did learn a few things. Don't be so overwhelmed by this. Yes, it looks scary. And that's why I blotted out a lot of the things when we weren't focusing on them. So I could help you guys focus. Focus more on what is super effective against what and then learn the resistances. I feel the resistances are a lot harder to learn. Even I myself am still learning them. That's why I couldn't provide very good uh, reasonings as to why some types resisted what. But super effective stuff is usually straightforward and it does help a lot and it does matter uh, when in a battle. So if you guys can memorize these, um, please let me know down below. Please be willing to help other students who aren't exactly picking up the mojo as quickly as y'all. And yeah, help each other out with this. So without any, do, uh, any further ado, you guys are dismissed. Thank you so much for listening to my third lecture here and I will see y'all next week for session number four. Bye.